Okay, everyone. Let's get this palace going. Right, so, um, welcome, everyone. Uh, in 2012, we had the um, IPC, the International Paleontological Congress, here at Imperial and next door at the Natural History Museum. And shortly after that, in a moment of weakness, I stupidly said, yeah, I'll organise a palace. Why not? How hard could it be? Um, at the time, 2017 seemed a very long way away, but we're here at last. So welcome to what turns out to be the largest palace there has ever been. We've got over 325 delegates, which is a record, 113 talks, 126 posters. There's a packed and exciting programme. Uh, I hope you'll be able to both enjoy yourselves and also enjoy uh, some excellent science, which is what we're really here for. So uh, the first thing I've got to do is to thank our sponsors, uh, whose names are all up on this sheet behind me. Uh, they've provided contributions in various forms from uh, video streaming services from Dame at the back, uh, through cold hard cash, which is always much appreciated, and possibly most significantly to the addition of chocolate trilobites to your delegates pack. That I'm sure many of you have discovered and those who haven't are rummaging through your bags now. Uh, the chocolate trilobite people will be selling things at the reception as well if you want to, if you want to buy some more. Um, I'd also like to thank the willing and helpful and able team who have helped me put this conference together uh, and without whom everything would have collapsed into chaos months ago. Uh, we'd never have got this far. The contributions from them are too many and too varied and there's too many of them for me to list them all now but you all know who you are. Thank you very much. Uh, without you this would never have happened and I'm sure uh, you'll help it all go very very smoothly. If anything goes wrong though it's my fault. Uh, they and the team of undergraduate helpers are identifiable. Uh, identifiable. They'll all be wearing these t-shirts. Uh, any problems you've got, any questions, uh, they're your first port of call. Ask them, what's, ask them about anything you need to, but don't be surprised if they look a bit harassed and confused some of the time, because there are quite a lot of us. Uh, most important of all, though, I'd like to thank in advance everybody who is speaking or presenting a poster or chairing a session. Uh, it's you who are going to make this meeting good. It's you who are going to make this meeting a success because your science is what this is all about, and I'm expecting great things, so no pressure. So, uh, just a tiny historical ramble, it won't last long, I promise. There hasn't been a palace in London for many, many, many years, since, in fact, before I was born. Uh, the last one was 1966, also at Imperial. Now, as far as I know, that's the only time palace has ever been held in London. Uh, this is a bit surprising because London is the largest concentration of paleontologists in the UK, several university departments and of course the Natural History Museum next door. Exactly why it's not been held in London I'm not entirely sure, there are many possible explanations. Um, some people have suggested that maybe people thought that London as a venue would scare people off, it would be considered too expensive and no one would come. Well, I think we can declare that myth well and truly busted. Uh, it turns out that London has not scared you off. You're here in your multitudes, uh, well over, far more than we were expecting. It's great to have um, such a, a massive palace. Uh, and you're all here ready to showcase your science, and it will be, I hope, a wonderful few days. Uh, a little bit about um, our host institution. I'll keep this short, but I have to say this stuff. So Imperial, as I'm sure you're aware, is one of the world's top 10 universities, according to Times Higher Education Supplement. I'm sure they know what they're talking about. Um, it's very good. And our host department, the Department of Earth Sciences, which has been my academic home for a good few years now, uh, it's recently and consistently been in the top three uh, British Earth Science departments. So we're in an august institution and we'll be well looked after, I hope. Um, so the department hosts now a thriving paleobiology group. There's quite a lot of us. Uh, we um, enjoy ourselves. But there's a long and illustrious history uh, of paleontology and imperial, stretching back to the 19th century and the foundation of the Royal School of Mines uh, somewhere in, I think, the 1850s, uh, which counted Thomas Huxley and Henry de la Beche amongst its uh, early academics. And as I'm sure you're all aware, our conference logo at the top left there is based on uh, one of um, de la Beche's famous cartoons called Awful Changes, the one where Professor Plesiosaur is giving a lecture on the human skull. It's a response to some of Charles, Charles Lyell's daft notions about biological cycles and extinct organisms coming back to life. Uh, these are some of the audience who have been um, uh, brought out for our logo. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling on about history. You don't want to hear that. So I'll say a little bit about logistics for the next few days before I hand over. So you've already found this Alexander Fleming building, clearly, because we're in it. Uh, the plan is we'll be here in the afternoons in this room, uh, so this afternoon, Monday afternoon, and Tuesday afternoon. 
And in the mornings, we'll be in a different building, the Royal School of Mines building, uh, which is where the Department of Earth Science is, for our triple parallel sessions. Can I remind speakers, please, to turn up um, up to half an hour before the session starts. One of us will be in the room, logged onto the machine, so you can load up your talks and get everything in place um, in good time. Uh, there is a speaker-ready room, not today, but there will be in, on Monday and Tuesday, where you can go and test your talks on our systems if you're worried, but it's PowerPoint, it works the same everywhere. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, we have a lot of posters. We've got um, more than we could do on one day. So the posters, as again, hopefully everyone is aware, are split into two groups. We have poster group A, which is Monday, and poster group B, which is Tuesday. If you don't know which you're in, please find out quickly. Um, have a word with reception at the coffee break, and they'll tell you. Though I think you should have had an email telling you. Uh, the posters, make sure I don't miss anything critical. Oh, yes. Yeah. So for poster setup, can you set them up in the Royal School of Mines in the morning between 8 and 9 in room 301? The details are in your abstracts document. Uh, we will then move them over here in the afternoon. Uh, so you don't have to do that. One or two people have said they're either bringing two copies or they're moving it themselves, in which case, if you're moving it, go to 301 and get it and move it over here. If you're bringing two copies, set your copy up over here. The few people who are doing that, though, can you liaise with the, the organisers to make sure it goes up in the right slot? Because there probably won't be any labels on the board saying which one goes where. Right, so that's all fairly easy. Tonight, we have a reception. So we have the symposium, and then we'll walk you over the um, Queen's Lawn to the Queen's Tower Rooms, where we will have champagne, wine, beer, and canapes, and hopefully a very jolly time. I will ass can assure you we are not likely to run out of drink. There's plenty there. Um, the, if we do run out, there's also a bar, so you can pay for more. So uh, you will enjoy yourselves, I'm sure. Uh, there are canapes to eat, but not a full dinner, so you will need to go and find yourself some food afterwards. In your packs, you'll find an A4 sheet showing the sort of areas to go and look for restaurants around South Kensington, if you don't know. If you just wander off randomly the wrong way, you probably won't find anything. Right. Um, tomorrow night is the annual address and the annual dinner. Uh, I'll talk more about those tomorrow. The annual dinner is sold out. Um, the venue is capped at 200 seats, so we can't take that many more people, but we have had a few cancellations. There was a waiting list. I believe the waiting list has now been gone through. So if anyone is interested in going and doesn't have a ticket, could you please email Joe Hellowell at executive at palace.org, uh, and it will be first come, first served. So everyone probably dives into the emails now. Uh, you will, of course, have to pay, and then we'll refund the original ticket holders who've had to withdraw. Okay, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, if you also, you are here and you have an annual dinner ticket but you think you won't be able to attend, it's quite likely that someone else would like your ticket. So also have a word with Joe, um, pass on your ticket and we'll see if we can find someone to buy it off you. On Wednesday, as you realise, there are two field trips. Uh, we've had a few last minute cancellations for these as well. So there are spaces available both for the Downhouse trip and also for the Isle of Sheppey Mudfest. Oh, sorry, the Isle of Sheppey um, fossil hunting expedition. <laughs> I'm going on downhouse, it'd be much nicer. Um, again, one or two tickets available for those. So again, if you're interested in going at l as a last minute sign up, uh, contact Jo. She'll have a, desk, a, pa a palace desk from tomorrow, but you can also email her on executive at palace.org. You can get the email from the website uh, and she will hopefully be able to slot you in. Uh, I also ought to mention that we have discovered a small ticketing foul up with the um, with the field trips, it is possible that some of you have a ticket for the wrong field trip. It's also just possible that one or two of you have, a, have no ticket for the field trips and you think you're going. Uh, if it says on your envelope that you have a ticket, then, you should, then you're going. If you're uncertain about your status, have a word of registration. We've got a master list. In the end, we'll just tick off the list when people turn up. So it's almost certainly not a problem. If you're worried, though, again, either email me uh, at the annual meeting address or email Joe, and we'll make sure it's straightened out. A couple of other minor things. So the palace has introduced a new code of conduct this year uh, to clarify um, which lectures you can photograph, which posters you can photograph, record, or mention on social media such as Twitter. Um, uh, there's a, a sheet in your packs detailing this uh, code of conduct. Please, can you read it? Uh, but just to clarify things as well, we've also introduced a, a bunch of logos that we've asked authors of posters and talks to use. Uh, so if you see these, uh, please respect them. By default, uh, you can assume that you can use social media to report on the talk unless someone says otherwise. 
If an author asks you verbally not to, of course, that should also be, uh, be respected. Uh, but you shouldn't photograph or record talks unless explicit permission is granted. Thank you. And finally, uh, we also this year have two separate art exhibitions, both with the theme of women in paleontology and women in science. Uh, we've got the Bearded Lady ex exhibition, which will be on display in the reception tonight and will also be in one of the coffee rooms in the Royal School of Mines for the next two days. Uh, we've got the pictures tonight and these are uh, looped documentary that we'll have uh, for you to view in the coffee room as well. And we have the Raising Horizons exhibition, which will be on display on this landing outside here uh, and the other two afternoons, it's not up yet. Uh, both of these should be fun and thought-provoking and interesting, but they should also help raise, um, in, raise awareness of diversity issues, which is probably quite a good point for me to hand over to uh, Professor Paul Smith, the president of the Paleontological Association, who will say a few words about the Palace Diversity Study, which is mentioned up there, before launching into what you're all here for, which of course is the symposium. So, Paul. Oh, it's, it's Dave. No, no, no. Right, um, thanks very much, Mark, and welcome to Palace 2017. Um, this will be very brief. It, it's a real pleasure to see so many people here in London for the 61st annual meeting uh, of the association. And Mark has given most uh, of the intro. If you do want to tweet um, any of the talks, then the hashtag is Palace 17. Uh, which, as a reminder, is on, on the back of the Abstracts programme as well. One of the big pieces of work that we're doing at the moment is, is to try and understand the diversity of paleontologists, both within Palace but more broadly as well. That's the diversity study that's referred to and is going to be going on as, as the conference uh, gets underway. I'll say a few more words about that at the end of the afternoon uh, before we go off to, to the icebreaker. But now let's get straight into the symposium and welcome a, a great lineup of speakers for evolutionary modelling in, in paleontology. Uh, and the first speaker is Graham Lloyd from University of Leeds, who's going to talk about journeys through discrete character morphospace. 